we are increasingly aware of the consequences of our neglect on the environment, causing devastating heat waves, natural disasters, species endangerment, and cataclysmic climate change. As a Christian, I believe it is part of my responsibility to take care of God's creation. After living and working in Costa Rica, I wondered what my contemporaries from Latin America might have to teach me. I was particularly inspired by what I learned from a congregation in Colombia. I realized that large-scale change must happen, but we all have a role to play in causing change for the better. Our Dos Aquillo Mennonite Church in Bogotá, Colombia, has a special group devoted to creation care. Four of our members share concrete actions in their daily lives that help reduce waste and make better use of natural resources. Our church has a project to collect and resell used items. Proceeds are destined towards the church's social outreach. Also, some ladies from the church made reusable cloth bags that help members to use less plastic bags. As part of my commitment to God and God's creation, I buy products that have the least possible impact on the environment and minimal packaging. Como familia, disminuimos nuestro consumo de productos animales. As a family, we have reduced our consumption of animal products such as meat and milk and have added more grains, vegetables, fruits, and whole foods to our diet. I buy locally produced food to minimize transportation from long distances. La cantidad de combustibles necesarios para ello. As a part of our commitment to God and God's creation, we walk or use public transportation wherever possible. By doing this, we help reduce air pollution, we exercise, and we also get to enjoy nature. As a family, we realize that our household can take concrete steps to care for creation and the way we use water. We take short showers and reuse the water for different chores around the house. We teach our daughters to conserve water when washing the dishes and doing other activities. We also set aside space to store organic matter such as peelings, bones and eggshells, which we take to a place where it can be composted and used as fertilizer. My husband and I are educators, and we think that educational activities are a key factor in changing society. As a church, we inspire each other by sharing new ideas. The world's population is growing, and so is the need for food. Can we produce on a large scale, in a responsible way? When I was in Brazil, I met Mennonite farmers who cultivate close to 120,000 acres. That's more land than I can imagine. What's even more amazing is how they work at it. For better soil conservation and increased fertility, we plant directly into the straw. What does this mean? After the harvest, we do not mix it. We do not intervene in the soil. We leave the straw on top, and the next planting season, we plant on top. So the soil is protected, decomposition is slower. We increase the organic matter, making the soil richer. Samuel told me that this makes it possible to use less pesticide, and that over the years, rainwater absorption is higher and seeding more effective. We use precision farming to be more efficient in our fertilizing. This makes it possible to be more conscientious in our farming practice. After soil sampling, we make maps on which we base our fertilizing according to the need of each acre of the farm. And when using the direct planting method, the fuel consumption is much lower than with our other methods. So the carbon footprint is also much lower. 
Samuel showed me that creation care can also mean good business practice, as suggested in the family business logo. Samuel told me that the farm profits make it possible to support the work of the church. The environment and ecology concerns all generations. In Ecuador, I met young parents ready to change their habits to preserve the environment and the health of their babies. They chose to use cloth diapers. What advantages are there with reusable diapers? Less waste, which is good for the environment. Another thing, the chemicals. The chemicals that disposable diapers have are not good for the baby's skin. It's good because cloth diapers take better care of the baby's skin, and because these diapers also help us financially. Every day, a baby needs at least six diapers. Imagine buying that many diapers a week. We would spend a lot of money. But with eco-friendly diapers, we can wash, dry, and reuse them. Why are these types of diapers more environmentally friendly? First of all, they are reusable and that helps preserve nature and, secondly, protects our children from infections. Sometimes it seems that people are not thinking about future, but it is not ours. The future is for our children. I learned about the massive flooding in Honduras caused by climate change. Around 20% of the world's population is directly exposed to intense rivers and coastal flooding. What does this mean for my friends in Honduras? It was really scary. It was about 9 p.m. when the town began to flood. We moved our things up to a higher level than our house. They took the little ones out, including me. We went to a relative and we were worried because we could do practically nothing. As young people, we have a deep-rooted commitment to service, and the response was immediate. As young people, the power is in our hands. We don't need to wait to be adults or older people to act. I think we are the engine for change. We have more and more hurricanes in our country. In 2020, we were hit by two one after the other. The church was prepared as a temporary shelter. I was called to help people with their medical conditions. We organized ourselves. One group would go to wash, another to remove mud, others would go help people remove their furniture. But the church was also full of mud. Not since Hurricane Mitch have we had a disaster of the magnitude as we had with Ada. Most of the problems due to natural phenomena can be traced to us human beings. With poorly managed deforestation, we often have catastrophic flooding. I was impressed by the youth people's strong commitment to address the crisis. In the long term, the church is committed to reforestation, a flood-preventing action. I come away from Latin America inspired by the many ways our Anabaptist sisters and brothers make creation care a part of their daily lives. After I returned home to Switzerland, I determined to take new steps in caring for God's creation. I realized that more and more people understand the need for both individual and societal change. In the Netherlands, I made some great discoveries. Cornelis Lely was a Dutch Anabaptist politician and civil engineer. He designed a plan for the construction of dikes. In his day, this was an amazing solution to gain more space. But now, new ideas are emerging, like building floating neighborhoods and even cities on the ocean. This will include a secure place to live, which is capable of surviving level 4 hurricanes. 
Why am I telling you all this? Because I think as a global church we are capable of this kind of creative thinking if we put our minds to it and make it a priority. What would happen if each of us made lifestyle choices like in Colombia? What would happen if we dared to be creative like farmers in Brazil? What would happen if we became responsible like the folks in Ecuador? What would happen if we advocated for change by educating ourselves in complex issues like in Honduras? Use the study guide to go deeper and to explore new ideas on creation care over a cup of coffee with friends.